In this video, we're going to talk about the main application of Warner diagrams, which is commonly called the toxic waste dump problem, or another way of saying it is we're trying to find the largest empty circle. So what's going to be happening is we're going to imagine that we're in this scenario where there's a toxic waste that needs to be disposed of. Where should we dispose it? Should we place it close to a city or should we place it furthest away from the city? Obviously, if it's a toxic, we would like to place it as far away as cities as possible. So if we imagine this Warner diagram on the right, and each site is the different city centers where it's the most populated amount of people, we would like to place our toxic waste dump as far away as possible as all the other cities. Therefore, what we're trying to find out is this largest empty circle. Now, if we remember from the introduction of Voronoi diagrams, every single vertex is created by being equal distance away from three of the sites. So, for example, this vertex here that I have in green is equal distance to the, vert to the sites K, B, and C. And while if I change colors and I look at the vertex right next to it, this vertex is equal distance away from K, F, and C. So if I have to create a circle, there's a circle being created around these three vertices with the vertex and the blue one being in the center, while there's another circle being created with center where it's passing through B, K and C. And of course, my diagram is not perfectly to scale, um, but our objective right now is to figure out which of these two vertices would be the furthest away from the other cities. So we're going to write that as our goal for today. Our goal is finding the points, sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two, that is furthest away from all the sites. And the answer to these toxic waste dump problems will always be at a vertex, right? So this vertex is always going to be the answer to our questions. Let's look at some examples to make sense of this. Example one, find the coordinates of the center of the radius of the largest empty circle in this Voronoi diagram. This Voronoi diagram is created by having four sites Therefore, we have two vertices. I'm going to label my two vertices. My first vertex is right here. And V1 is created by having the site A, the site C, and the site B. So all of these are of equal distance. And we can see that V1 is going to be at the coordinates 4 and 3. If we look at the next coordinates, we have the next vertex. Let's call this V2. V2 is created by looking at the site D, the site C, and the site B. So let's go ahead and find the distances. Now remember, all of our blue distances are exactly the same, so it's enough for me to find just one of these distances. Since we have vertex 2 here, which is at coordinate 10 and 3, and we have the coordinate of D, which is 15, 3, this creates a horizontal line. Therefore, the distance of this line is going to be 5. 15 minus 10, right? So we're going to have a distance of 5. And let's try and find the distance of one of these green lines. Again, they're all equal to each other, so it's enough to find just one. So I'm going to focus on two coordinates. Let's say I focus on B and V1. It could have been V1 and A or V1 and C, as long as we just choose one. I can use the distance formula, and then I substitute substitute the variables in here. So 6 minus 4 squared plus 6 minus 3 squared. And when you put this into the calculator, you get that the distance is 3.61. Therefore, the coordinate of the largest empty circle is going to be V2. So therefore, the coordinate that we're looking for is 10 and 3. Example 2. A town has four coffee shops. An entrepreneur wishes to open a new coffee shop in the town but would like to be as far as possible from the other four coffee shops. Where should he put it? Consider the Warner diagram below showing the position of the four coffee shops. The coordinates are A, B, C, and D, where one unit represents one kilometer. A. 
find the coordinates of the vertices P and Q. Okay, so first off, whenever you have information given to you in the question, which is not on the diagram, I would suggest that you replace this and put it on the diagram. Now that all of our information is on the diagram, let's go ahead and find the position of P and Q. I'm going to start off with P because that's the easiest one to find. If I look at P right here, I notice that it's created by the intersection of a horizontal line and a vertical line. So let's look at what each of these horizontal and vertical lines are. This vertical line is the perpendicular bisector between B and C. So we see that they have the exact same y value, therefore their perpendicular bisector is going to be vertical. So what's exactly halfway between 8 and 2? We can add 8 plus 2 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. Therefore the equation of this line is that x is equal to 5. And we can do the same thing for the horizontal line. The horizontal line is a perpendicular bisector between C and D. And we notice that their y-coordinates are 5 and 2. So 5 plus 2 is 7, divided by 2 is 3.5. Therefore, the coordinates of P is 5 and 3.5. Now, the coordinate of Q is not as easy to find because the coordinate of Q is not perfectly on a horizontal or vertical line. Therefore, I need to do a little bit more work for this one. I'm going to need to find out first the perpendicular bisector between AB, the equation of that, and the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and D. And then I'm looking for when they're intersecting each other. So let's go ahead and do the work for this. So first, let's find the perpendicular bisector between A and B. So I'm going to go through my steps. First, let's find the midpoint. So the midpoint is going to be 1 plus 2 divided by 2, and then 6 plus 2 divided by 2. So the midpoint is going to be 1.5 and 4. Then the slope between A and B is 6 minus 2 divided by 1 minus 2. So we have 4 and negative 1. The slope is negative 4. Therefore, the slope of the perpendicular bisector, <coughs> we're doing the negative reciprocal, is 1 over 4. So the equation of my perpendicular bisector, y is equal to 1 over 4x plus c. And I can replace the midpoint into the equation in order to find what is the y-intercept. And when you do this, you get that the y-intercept is 3.625. Therefore, the equation is y is equal to 1 fourth x plus 3.625. So this is the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and B. So this line right here. So now go ahead and try and find the perpendicular bisector between A and D. Try and find this equation here. Pause the video and come back. So you get that the equation is y is equal to 6x x minus 21.5. Now, the objective of doing all of this is to find the intersection point. So we're looking for coordinate Q, which is the intersection point. So go ahead and in your calculators, find the intersection point. We have one function, y1, and we have our other function, y2, and we can find the intersection point in our calculators. And we get that the intersection point, Q, is going to be 4.37 and 4.72. Now for the next part, part B. Determine whether a fifth shop should be cited so as to be as far as possible from any other shops and how far this will be. So in order to answer this question, what we're looking for is the distance between Q and D, or Q and A or Q and B, same one, Comparing that distance to the distance between P and D, or P and C, or P and B. So go ahead and use a distance formula and try and find the distance I would probably choose between Q and D, and then P and D, because I'm repeating this twice. Let's first try and find the distance between, let's say, Q and D. So using the distance formula, we get that we have 8 
minus 4.37 squared plus 5 minus 4.72 squared. And when you put this into the calculator, you get that the distance is 3.64. And now we're going to repeat that with the distance this time between P and D. So the distance between P and D, we're going to have 8 minus 5 squared plus 5 minus 3.5 squared. And when you put this into the calculator, you're going to get 3.35. Therefore, the largest distance is going to be 3.64. In order to answer the question, where should we be placing the new coffee shop? Well, the new coffee shop should be placed in coordinate Q because it is a distance of 3.64 kilometers from the nearest coffee shop. A hiker on a mountain trail marks the water sources. A, B, C, and D, and E on the map. He starts drawing the perpendicular bisectors as seen in the incomplete diagram below. Draw the perpendicular bisector to complete the Voronoi cell that encloses site E and find its equation. In the context of the problem, explain the meaning of Voronoi cell E and C. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and D. Okay. So looking at this Voronoi diagram, we have one, two, three perpendicular bisectors created. Now we need to be able to look at this perpen look at this Voronoi diagram and know which is the perpendicular bisector between our two points. Let's first start with this perpendicular bisector. This is the perpendicular bisector that is going to be between B and E. We can clearly see that because if I were to draw a straight line between B and E, this perpendicular bisector does in fact seem to cross at their midpoint and is perpendicular, right? So this is the perpendicular bisector between B and E. Perpendicular bisector B and E. If we look at the next one, let's look at this perpendicular bisector. This is the perpendicular bisector between A and E. Again, if I were going to connect A and E, this seems to be the midpoint and it's perpendicular. So we're going to say that this is the perpendicular bisector between A and E. And while the third one is the perpendicular bisector between E and C. Right? So just to confirm E and C, yep, this does look perpendicular. So therefore, I can write that this is between E and C. Therefore, the only one that's missing is between E and D. So in part A, draw the perpendicular bisector to complete this Voronoi cell and then find its equation. We're looking for the equation of the perpendicular bisector between E and D. Pause this video and try and find the equation of the perpendicular bisector yourself. And you're going to get that the equation of the perpendicular bisector is y is equal to 1 half x plus 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So we're going to go ahead and draw this perpendicular bisector to the best of our ability. First, the midpoint is 3.5 and 2, so I can go ahead and graph that. And then the slope is 1 half, so I'm rising 1 and I am running 2. So something like this. And then I can connect my two dots together. So this would be the perpendicular bisector between E and D. So that was for part A. Now for part B, we're told, in the context of the problem, explain the meaning of Voronoi cell E. So Voronoi cell E is all the space that our site E is in. right? So all this is the Voronoi cell E. Well, in the context, what does it mean? Each of the sites represent um, water sources, right? So if you are in the cell E, the closest water source to you is going to be at site E. And finally for C, find the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and D. So between A and D, we have A is the coordinate 1 and 1, while D was the coordinate 4 and 1. So what's special about these two lines is if I connect them, they create a horizontal line. Therefore, the perpendicular line will be a vertical line. 
and we know that all vertical lines are special and they have the equation x is going to be equal to a number. So we're going to find the midpoint between these two lines. So the midpoint between 1 and 4 is going to be 2.5. So therefore, the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and D is x is equal to 2.5.